I was on my phone, okay? Hi fans of High Quality Entertainment. Now, I want to talk about this particular Paul McCartney album, Driving Rain, or as me, Mr. Mayo, calls it, Thriving Pain. And I've had this, uh, I probably bought this a little after Memory Almost Full, when I started listening to Paul, Mc Paul McCartney again. And I had a recent comment because I actually enjoyed his latest song, Get Enough. I thought it was good. And somebody had left a comment, you're one of these, you're probably one of these McCartney fans that loves everything he does, even if he, whatever, in a, in a song, like farts in a song or whatever. And all I will say about that is, I was not a fan of Paul McCartney for 25 years. Thank you. I lost total interest in him after uh, Tug of War, which I did enjoy, but I never bought uh, Pipes of Peace. I heard you know, the song Pipes of Peace, maybe one or two others, and just no interest in it. And then Off the Ground, and any of his later albums, I just never bothered buying. I just lost interest in Paul McCartney. And then when his album Memory Almost Full came out, uh, I liked the song Dance Tonight. I, I enjoyed the video and everything. My foot was tapping to it and I thought, I'm going to try buying a Paul McCartney album for the first time in 25 years. And I loved the album. And then of course, you know, I'd, I'd heard good things about Flaming Pie, so I finally bought Flaming Pie, which I really enjoyed, but I still need to listen to that more. Uh, and of course, after uh, Flaming Pie, Driving Rain came out. Anyway, uh, all of his releases, except for uh, Kisses on the Bottom, I was trying to remember the title of it, which, which was good, but I, never, I bought it, I listened to it a couple of times, and just... But it, it's not a bad album. But all of his other albums, like New, his latest, Egypt Station, uh, Chaos and Creation in the Backyard, which is my favorite. And then going back, you know, listen, uh, becoming more of a fan of his earlier albums, like Wildlife and Red Rose Speedway especially. And of course, Ram and McCartney, McCartney too. And so I still, I need to go back and listen to his bad albums like uh, Press, Press to Play and Off the Ground. I like the song Off the Ground, the first song. I've listened to that a few times and I, I enjoy it. I just need to listen to the whole album. But I was watching a uh, video of me, Mr. Mayo, ranking all of the Paul McCartney albums, you know, Wings and Solo, N not not including like The Fireman and all of his classical CDs and everything. And I was kind of surprised that he ranked this as Paul McCartney's worst album. And in fact, he said, out of all the Beatles solo albums, this is his least favorite. And even though I have this in my collection, I didn't listen to it a lot, but I, I kind of enjoyed it. I liked uh, Driving Rain and a couple of other songs, but I never really sat down and gave it a chance. And so that's what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks, giving it a chance. And uh, <clears throat> in my community, I posted, uh, I think it was yesterday, what do you consider Paul's worst album? And Driving Rain was mentioned quite a bit, along with uh, Press to Play and Wildlife and Egypt Station a couple times there, the Russian album. Pipes of Peace was also another one. Flowers in the Dirt. But there's there are quite a few quite a few votes for Driving Thriving Pain. And I'm actually kind of surprised because th this th for me is a great album. It's uh slow. I have to admit, most of it is kind of slow. You could even say, you know, especially on the first listener or second listen, oh, it's boring, it just drags on. 
but you have to give albums like this a chance and some of the songs after a couple of listens really stand out. So I'm going to just quickly go through each song and there's a couple of them that I have to listen to again to reevaluate them to make sure I know what I'm talking about, which I usually don't know what I'm talking about. And th this album was recorded, I think, pretty quickly in a couple weeks or whatever. And he was in this new relationship with uh, Heather. And, you know, he'd gone through some rough times, right? And so this is a kind of a pretty dark, kind of depressing album. But there's some you know, positive songs on it too. And, and people also complain about this album cover. I think it's, it's different. It's, uh, at the time Paul had this Casio watch which took, you know, crappy pictures and so he took a picture of himself. I think it's kind of cool. So the first song, Lonely Road, I love it. I loved it right away actually. And uh, I would give it a a 10 out of 10. From a lover to a friend. Now, the first time I heard this, when, when it was released, I didn't care for it. I thought it was a little dreary and a little weird. And I especially did not like the la 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 parts of the song, but now I do. Uh, it's not my favorite on the album, but I enjoy it. I would give it an 8 out of 10. It's a nice song. She's given up talking. I like it. It's not one of his great songs, but it's not a bad song to me. It might be a little over long. It's almost five minutes long. That's the only thing I would say negative about it, but I can hear it. You know, it's, uh, there's a lot of melodies, even on this album, that stick in your head. Uh, when I think of She's Given Up Talking, I can sing it in my head. She's given up talking, don't say you. I like it. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Driving Rain or Thriving Pain. It's an upbeat song, surprisingly, and I loved it right away. And I remember at the time this album was released, some Paul McCartney fans were complaining about the lyrics one, two, three, four, five, let's go for a drive. They thought, you know, pretty lame lyrics, but Paul's always, once in a while, written lame but fun lyrics. So I wasn't offended at all with him writing simple lyrics to a very catchy song. I love the song. It's a 10 out of 10. I do. I love the song. Just remember this. Really nice, uh, slow song. It's your typical nice Paul McCartney ballad. I don't, I don't know. I just hope at least one Paul McCartney fan that thinks this is a terrible album goes back and really listens to it because it is not a bad album to me. And I totally respect, like me, Mr. Mayo, saying, oh, this is the worst. That's his opinion. I totally respect that. I'm just saying, I'm just kind of surprised that some Paul McCartney fans think it's like dreadful and I really enjoy it. I forgot to rate, I do, so I will. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I really enjoy the song. Tiny Bubble. All the world's a tiny bubble floating inside. What a catchy tune. It's, I think it's a great Paul McCartney song. I think it might be my favorite on the album. And... It's a 10 out of 10. It's a, a Paul McCartney classic as far as I'm concerned. And Jinx loves magic. Uh, the only negative about this song is I believe he wrote this for his wife at the time, Heather. But besides that, it's a, it's a catchy song. It's a nice song. Uh, I don't find it boring. I, it's... Uh, an 8 out of 10. I like it. I like it a lot. Your Way. It's another typical, really good Paul McCartney ballad type song. Uh, the, uh, you know, 
I, I definitely see, you know, some Paul McCartney fans, you know, that love him rocking out and all that. This is not the album where he rocks out, folks. It's kind of a laid back, easy, easy album uh, with a couple of, you know, up, upbeat songs, but most of it is kind of mellow. And, and I guess, you know, first or second listen, you're going to say, oh my God, this is dreadful. It's so boring. But like I said, let the, let the melodies sink in. It is a really good album. And, and your way is another nice ballad. I would give it a, uh, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. It's not one of my favorites on the album, but I still enjoy listening to it. Spinning on an Axis. Now this one is kind of lacking in melody. It's, and it's pretty long. It's over five minutes long. It might be my least favorite song on the album, but still it's listenable. And I think further listens, I'm go going to like it more and more. And I, I'll give it a six out of 10. It's an okay song. About You. It's kind of a rocker. It's uh, upbeat. Uh, it's under three minutes long. I enjoy it. It's not one of his catchiest songs, but uh, I love his vocals on it and everything. And it's a good song. I'll give it an eight out of 10. I, I do like it a lot. I was going to say seven, but no, it's an eight. I, I really do enjoy it. See, and, and he's singing on it, Out of the Darkness, Into the Light, because, like I said, this is kind of a dark album, but he's seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, I would rate that a an eight out of ten. Now, this one's funny. The last time I was listening to this album on headphones at night, and this song comes on, and the first couple of minutes, it's just, main, it's mainly an instrumental. And I'm thinking, oh, this is good. I'm really enjoying this. What's this called? Because previously I was thinking when it came to this song called Heather, I was going to, you know, make it kind of a joke thing and say, I'm not even going to review the song next. But it is a great song. I love the uh, music in it. I don't like the, the subject matter so much. But I would give it a... Uh, a 9 out of 10. I really do like it a lot. Except for the name. And uh, <clears throat> another slow one, Back in the Sunshine again, but he's once again trying to be more positive, no more pain, Back in the Sunshine again. And I, I think a big negative for this album, besides there being maybe, maybe it, it needed one or two more uplifting songs, is the, the CD itself is way too long, but that's the way, you know, when CDs came out, they would just cram it full of uh, 60, 70 minutes of, of music. And, but Back in the Sunshine Again, I enjoy it. It's a good song. I would give it an eight out of 10. Your Loving Flame is gorgeous. It's a classic to me. And I would give it a 10 out of 10. I really love that song. Riding into, I don't know how you pronounce that, Japer, Japer, Jopper. I think it's a uh, tribute to George Harrison. It's got sitar in it, and it's good. Uh, it's not a favorite of mine on the album, but it's very listenable. It's not boring to me. I enjoy it. Love the music. I'll, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Rinse the Raindrops. This is Paul being experimental. He does this uh, quite often at the end of albums, like uh, little, the little quick guitar thing at the end of Wildlife and uh, other albums. And it's over 10 minutes long, and it's kind of like a jam, but I love it. I, I loved it right away, actually, and uh, it rocks. It's got its high energy and uh, lots of really cool vocals and guitar work, and I give it a 10 out of 10. I love, this, love the song. And then the bonus track is Freedom. I don't think it was on the original album. I think uh, Paul, uh, right after it was released, or maybe just before it was released, he tacked it on. But uh, it's not a favorite of mine, but I mean, the, the subject matter, you know, it's about 9-11, so I'm not going to give it a a bad rating. I'll give it like a, a 7 out of 10. So that's it. I There's not one 
for me, there's not one bad song on this album. I would not consider it his worst album, but that being said, I haven't heard uh, all of uh, Off the Ground or, you know, two or three of his other ones. Flowers in the Dirt. I, I need to, to reevaluate that at some point. And uh, so I just want to say, for, you know, all the Paul McCartney fans saying, oh, this is so bad. Give it another chance because there's lots of great melodies on this and late at night, put your headphones on, have a little glass of wine and soak in the beautiful melodies. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.